Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to show you, demonstrate to you, and give you a tutorial on UDA, a fantastic new portable MIDI sequencer from Ryan Robinson. Before I continue, I'd like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. So it's a MIDI sequencer, it's a portable one, it's very easy to use, straightforward as when you know how to use them, of course, they become all really easy. But it's really nice, and you can use it, you know, as the name says in the App Store, it's a portable one. So let's go straight into it. So we are inside AUM. Let's create an audio channel, and let's pick up something simple like these electric from Apesoft. Next. Let's create a MIDI channel, and as a MIDI processor, we are going to search for UDA, so double O, and here it is, UDA. Now, let's connect the two, and the first thing I want to show you is you have five ports, as it says here. Click on it, and you can decide from four different outputs, or also you can choose all output. Let's go for the first one, okay? So let's open UDA, and let's maximize the screen. Okay, so first things first. In the middle, you find a series of uh, circles here, which represents the steps for the sequencer. And you have this large view at the moment, as it is set here to large, but you can change that clicking here on the plus sign to small, or you can, which you can see, you have a smaller view, which is ideal, for example, if you're using a mobile phone. And, of course, you can also go back to the large view as well, which is what I will use for uh, the tutorial. Next, what you see is a series of uh, other sections. This one is the sequencer. Below, you have uh, here the wormholes. And if you scroll down, you will see other parts of the wormholes. And I will explain what they are in a second. Then on the right hand side, you, have, uh, you can see the four outputs here, the four lanes, one, two, three, and four. And the first one is enabled, and the, the second, third, and fourth are disabled by default. Next, up here on the top left, you have a preset menu. This is where you have your presets, and you can save your presets. Then you have a modulation output, which I will show you shortly as well, at least a demonstration of them. And you have also access to an inboard keyword as well, in case you don't want to use, for example, the... AUM keyboard. Okay, click on the keyboard again. The other thing to say is that when you click on some of the values, like here, duration eighth or one eighth, click and hold, you see a menu appearing with different selection. That is true also for others' as parameters as well, like this one. Now, if your menu appear and disappear very quickly, which means you need to hold for uh, uh, the menu to stay there, you can change that behavior going here where you have the three um, dots up here. You scroll down and you have an option for persist menus and modifiers. And as well, you can make also the um, action button slash, okay? So just remember that. Okay, so to record, you have to actually have an input. So let's use for this purpose, the internal keyboard, okay? And you need to put it in recording mode and you can see when I've done that, you see this red button which says one. So let's type some notes or let's click some notes on the internal keyboard, like so. And you can see it is recording now um, notes. When I stop here, it means it recorded seven of, of notes. It's waiting to record the number eight. So let's give another G for number eight. Now let's stop recording. And remember to stop recording because I've noticed that sometimes, particularly when you work with uh, wormholes, it behaves strangely if you're still in recording mode, okay? So, let's play. So, as you can see, when it gets to the last stop, the last step, it starts again from the first one, right? So, let's remove the internal keyboard now. The pace that the, st the sequencer uses to move to the next step is the determined by this parameter here, pace. And as I showed you a moment ago, you can go by different selection, which is based on note duration, okay? 
Similarly, for Elastic now with only one output, output number one, it is first enable, which you can see there because you can disable it, and then you have a pace for the notes, which I like to think more um, like the duration of the notes. And in this case, the duration of the note or the pace of the note is the same of the pace of the sequencer, but therefore there is one note played for each step because they're perfectly in sync. Now, if I was to increase or decrease the duration of uh, the notes and therefore increase the pace of the notes on, on line output number one, but I keep the pace the same on the sequencer, listen to what happens. Effectively, it plays the same note twice on the same step because he has time to repeat that note okay, before the sequencer goes to the next step, right? Now, let's go back to B 1 eighth, but let's do the opposite here on the sequencer. So let's increase the pace to 16th and let's see what happens. So in this case, the sequencer moves to the next step before the note has finished playing, which means you're going to miss some notes. And this is where you have uh, this button which helps to synchronize the voices. So let me show you what happens as I'm playing in this uh, uh, configuration and then I press on the sync voices um, control here. So it synchronizes um, the pace between the sequencer and of course the line output. Now you can obtain the same effect holding the a bump button, so let me show you. And more specifically, the bump button does the opposite of what the sync voices um, um, control is set to. Okay, so if this was synchronized and I'm playing, if I press the bump button, it will do the opposite. It, re it removes the synchronization. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to the same pace for the sequencer as well. <clears throat> Next, you can see there is a, a direction here. You can go forward. Let's click on to see the settings. You can go backwards. You have different option. Nice one is random as well. Which is really nice, right? And remember, you also have a hang button. And let me show you how this works. So let's click play and I'll show you what happens when I press on the hang button. So it hangs on that particular step, okay? You also have a shift button, which will shift notes by the amount which is specified here in semitones, in this case, 12, the four and octave. So let's try. Okay, perfect. Then we have two um, sections here, two parameters, one for rest and one for skip. So let's see how this works. Click on rest and select some notes that um, we want the sequencer to play, but uh, it will be not produce any sounds because you have a rest for those steps. In this case, steps two, four, six, eight. If you want to remove them, click on them again with rest selected. Of course, you can insert the skip as well, which is different because in this case, the sequencer will skip the step. Let's listen. So quite different. And again, you can remove uh, the skip just clicking on the same steps. Okay, hopefully that uh, is straightforward. That you can create a very nice composition. Now, let me show you what happens when you go to line output two and you enable that. And um, in order to do that, let's uh, duplicate this audio channel, like so. And uh, also let's uh, select the second, oops, the second output, okay? And of course we could also select a different preset as you like. Let's click play. Now, one thing I want to show you is that you can set the offset here for any line output. So let's go up this by seven semitones. Mm -hmm. 
And in this case, you can create a nice harmony as well, which is more evident in terms of what is happening. Now, one thing that I like to use is a program called um, Grand Stuff. And the reason I like to use this is because it shows you the representation of the notes coming as incoming MIDI. So if I connect all the output from UDA to the Grand Stuff, and then I click play. You can see what happens in terms of notes and you can also record it and in, in this case and export it as a MIDI file, which I find that very useful to understand what UDA is actually doing. The other thing I want to show you as well, let's go, um, let's deactivate again uh, that uh, line back to offset zero. Let's go back to the first line output and um, let's set the steps to up 16th, okay, the pace 16th, <clears throat> like so. And let's go to have uh, one quarter as a pace on the sequencer. Okay, in this case, you will hear four notes repeated for each step. Here you have a pattern, which at the moment says one, which means you have only one step which is played. Listen to what happens when I increase this to four. And you can see a white dot and three black dot, which means the first I will, note will be played, then the second a step on the pattern will not be played because it's black, and the same for step number three and four, they will not be played. And this is useful because then you can click on the black step and create, uh, for example, a pattern. And it can go up to 16. You can increase the steps again as you like, which is really nice. Okay, so we have seen the pattern, the offset, the pace for the line output. We, you have also a length in terms of gating. Okay, so let's listen. course you hear it better if we decrease the pace okay and let's match also in the sequencer as well the same pace okay perfect <clears throat> now let me um delete everything and what you will find here is that it gives you a selection of clearing notes wormholes or both I will explain how wormholes works in a second, but for now, let's select clear both. Now let's bring uh, the AUM keyboard. Let's put it on recording mode and let's record more than uh, eight notes. So let's have a go. Okay, perfect. Let's listen and let's disable the recording mode. Okay, perfect. Let's hide the AUM keyboard. Now let me show you what happens when you click on the flip button. So effectively it changes the direction instead of going horizontally, it's going vertically, okay? By still in a loop. Okay, and that's an interesting one to create variation, of course, um, live. Okay, so now that we have three lanes of uh, in the sequencer of steps, I'm going to show you what wormholes are. So let's position the current step on number four, and you see that it is the it, it, here where it's a source. It will have number four, which is the source step. Okay, if you click six, it will change to six. But let's click on four. Now, here it says destination, click where it says noun and select one. Okay, and then click again where it says one to remove the selection. You can see the stars be before and after the number four. So let's see what happens. Go back at the beginning, play. So it plays step one, two, three, and four. Then four, there is a rule which says go back to step number one as the destination and continue like that. Okay. Now, there is a way to change that, and where it says here, rule, you can change the rule, for example, repeat once. So let's try again. 
So as you can see, he went back, repeated once, and then he moved after uh, step four and he went into step five. And there are a lot of different rules. So I suggest you have a look. Um, different options, probability, etc. lots of them. Now, one of the things I also like is that you can establish what is the next step after the, after the rule has been satisfied. So in this case, and that is called normal step. So if you click on next step, instead of going to step number five, we're going to say, oh, they go to step number nine. That will be your normal step. So let's see what happens. So as you can see, you repeated step from one to four. And when you finished, instead of going to step number five, you went to step number nine. Really nice. Now, you can create more than one wormholes. Oh, yes. So for example, let's say we are on step 22. That is the new source. We're going to say destination. Go to step number 12. Okay. Repeat once. Come out from the selection of the destination. Go back to the top and let's listen. So he played step one to four, then he repeated those. After number four, the normal step was nine, so he moved to step number nine. Then he continued to step number 22. To step number 22 said, go back to step number 12. So he repeated all these steps, and then after that, he continued with step number 23. So really, really nice indeed. Okay, next, what I want to show you is, let's clear all of this, so clear both, and let's record some chords. And in order to record some chords, of course, click recording and click and hold some notes on the keyboard. So actually, let me redo that because I don't like what happens. Still in recording mode. OK. OK, I recorded two chords. Let's stop recording. And I was I recorded them holding down notes. So now we have only one line output enabled. Okay, let's click play. So what's happening is they're playing the first no note of each chord for each step. So the first one was a C major chord with a B, and the second one was an F major chord with a E. So let's check on grand stuff. Okay, so now let's go back to Uda. You see here it says rule, okay, which means what rules to follow, okay, when playing notes in the case you have chords. So let's say you can change that to lowest, highest, you have a lot of selection, random, or even up. So let's see what happens when I select the up and I have still only one line active. Okay, so it's going up. And i show you that even better if I record only one chord. So let me show you. Let's clear these both. Let's record. Okay, you have only one chord now. Let's click play. And you can see it's going up all the notes of the code which has been recorded on the first step, which is really nice. And of course, you can create a combination when you have more than one line output enabled, and that's get really, really interesting. So let me go back to UDA, activate the second one, and why not, let's go up by seven steps, let's try. Okay, really, really nice indeed. Oops, let's go back to Uda. In this case, I have the env selected, but you could say, why not? Go random, for example, even better. Really, really nice indeed. You can create some really nice combination. Okay. Now, let me show you something else as well. 
So we have only one chord um, active. Okay, so now let's um, disable line output two and let's keep only line output uh, one active. Okay, so now let's um, add another audio channel and uh, let's um, bring in something like um, a red strike. Let's connect these to um, the first output. Why not? And let's solo that. Okay, let's play. Okay, perfect. Now let's go back to Uda. I mentioned at the very beginning of the tutorial there is this mod out. Okay, and this is where you can select, okay, sequencer X coordinate is enabled. CC number, which is going out, is going to be 30. Why not? You can also set the range and smooth, and you can do also for the Y coordinate, the sequencer phase, etc. You have different options. Now, let's go back inside um, Red Strike. Okay, let's click play. Okay, you don't see much. Now, let's click on uh, Learning MIDI Control. Let's click on the cutoff here. Let's click play. Okay, it says C30 there. Let's stop that. Let's click play. Now, what's happening is you don't see a variation because you have, you have only one step and the RAR um, is set to have mod out as sequencer X. So let me record some notes. Okay, so. Keyboard. Recording mode. Perfect, that will do. So let's go back inside um, Red Strike. Let's click play. So you can see the notes are still sent out from UDA as a sequencer, but also MIDI CC30, which in this case have been mapped to the cutoff. Uh, in the filter section of Red Strike, and those are increasing based on the sequencer X coordinate, and those will change the cutoff value. So in this case, you can create, again, nice effect or additional effects using CC messages as well, which is really fantastic. So hopefully you will agree with me that this is a fantastic uh, uh, portable MIDI sequencer, so well done to Ryan. It's really, really nice, simple to use. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.